to the video series of Amazon Data Analytics Speciality. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we will be discussing about the S3 lifecycle management. So let's start. First, we try to understand what is a S3 lifecycle. So S3 lifecycle basically defines how S3 manage objects during their lifetime in bucket. So basically, it allow users to automatically transition objects between different storage classes and delete them when no longer needed. So if you guys don't know about the storage classes, please check out my old video uh, where we talk about the storage class and the basic information related to S3. Uh, just to make it more understandable, we, we, we try to understand like where this S3 life cycle comes into the picture so we'll start with a use case so let's say we have uh, log files from a web applications which won't frequently access after a month or two but we want to keep them for long term due to like compliance or regulatory reasons so in this case what we can like in this case we can create a life cycles policy that moves the logs to from like standard storage class to glacier storage class after 60 days it's like a very basic so in standard um, storage class we will be able to access them frequently however in the gl glacier like after 60 days we just keeping them uh, for the regulatory or compliance reasons there are basically uh, two types of behaviors allowed in life cycle management one is transaction other one is the expiry so in transition in which storage class for the objects changes. Basically, it means like it changed from one storage class to other, like standard to glacier or standard to standard infrequent access or something like that. And expiration is where the object is, is expired and is permanently deleted. So as we can see in the image uh, um, on the screen, like here we can see we have objects which were first uh, put it in the standard uh, storage class after 30 days they were uh, transitioned to the standard infrequent access class after 60 days to the uh, glacier that's also a transition and and after that after like 465 days they uh, they were getting deleted so th this is the and this is an example of a, or like a visualization of the s3 life cycle management and as as we uh, talking about depending on your use case like what uh, what you want to do or your requirements we can have different transitions and expirations according to that the example here is like it's a one year cycle where for the first 30 days the object stays in s3 uh, standard storage after that it get transitioned to uh, infrequent access storage and then it get to the glacier and from glacier it it uh, like after 465 days it's get uh, deleted and if you add up all this is will be 365 days that's like one year uh, so few things keep in mind like a uh, transition to both of accents are important and depending on your use case this is not something um, uh, like it's there is no standard rule so it's like whatever is the your requirement or use case we go with that uh, the other thing uh, we like lifecycle management is applicable to both non-versioning and versioning enable buckets. So that's like important to keep in mind. Object lifecycle management apply uh, as I mentioned, sorry, uh, for both versioning and versioning. Uh, we can pick whether we want to apply the actions on the current or non-current versions, which we will see in the demo. Uh, the other thing which i want to talk about here is like s3 supports a waterfall model for their transition as shown on the screen like uh, uh, you can see that like it start from s3 standard from s3 standards we can go to other classes like standard ia intelligent steering one zone glacier or glacier deep dive and all so basically what does this waterfall means like uh, any object in s3 standards can transition to any of the classes and uh, any of the object in S3 standard IA can be transitioned to any of the classes except S3. So it's not the way like if you have an object in S3 can be transitioned to the standard one. Like, so if we have an object in standard IA, it can't be 
transit uh, to S3 standard storage class. We'll see this in the demo. Like this is something keep in mind. In demo, uh, we will see uh, like um, when you, you performing this, like you 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 can sense it. Like uh, because when you, uh, I'll show you like how how we can find out this. But this thing is uh, like we need to keep. Uh, it's we need to be aware about it and the, there are a few other things or like a couple of other things we need to keep in mind the first one is the only large objects or any object which is more than 128 kb can be transitor uh, so if it is less than that like uh, uh, we won't be able to do the transition uh, and it, it is due to the like uh, because of the performance and the cost impact and the last thing which uh, we need to keep in like minimum storage duration. So each of the mm, uh, storage class have certain minimum uh, storage duration. So for example, for 30 days is the standard standard IA and one zone IA. They, like there, if we like an uploading an object there, it's going to stay there for 30 days. And only after 30 days, we can apply any transition or an action to it. So same for the Glacier Instant and Flexible, like it's 90 days and Deep Archive, it's uh, 180 days. And uh, for Intelligent Tiering, yes, it, it, there is like no, no such condition where you have to like keep it for minimum storage. But other storage classes have a certain number of days we need to keep in, um, like it, 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 there will be a minimum storage duration for them. So let's jump to the demo very quickly. We go to, okay, one second. Let me clear this up. Uh, okay, so first thing, uh, one second. Let's click on reload. It will take you the login. Logging into the page. I have multi factor authentication. Give me one second. I will hold my phone. Let me log in again. Sorry about that. Oh, it's already logged in. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so I already have a bucket. If you want, you can create a new one. And let's just go into the bucket. We have one object in it. And in the properties, it's we can see like versioning is enabled. But if it is not enabled, still we can have a uh, life cycle management cycle uh, applicable here. So to do that, we first need to go into management, click on the management. And here you see this uh, tab where you can create your life cycle rules. We click on this, create life cycle rules, we name it. So I'll say, uh, uh, let's, let's give it a name, life cycle demo. And after that, like, uh, we, we need to pick like where this rule, the scope of this rule, like whether it's applicable to all of the objects or the only limited. So we keep it, let's make it uh, applicable to all of the objects in this bucket. And then we need to acknowledge. So click on this. And after this, or you, you can like keep it by default to what you, whatever it is you want to do. And then you can specify the filters because uh, if you specific to one prefix or a folder of S3, you can do that too. Okay, I'll do it, apply to all because we don't have much in there. And this is the one thing I was mentioning is like life cycle action rules are applicable to versioning, like um, versioning and non-versioning buckets, but we can take it this way. Like uh, it is it is applicable to them. So because we have two, types of like two types of actions we can take so it will create like four different uh, uh, types of actions on these like for two for versioning and two for non-versioning and that we can see move basically means transition like move current version of object between storage 
move uh, non-current version that's like uh, that's also transition uh, non-current like basically version non version like this one these are like all the examples for the versions one and uh, like different actions we can take we can take actions on the current version non-current version uh, expire the current version permanently delete non-current version and the fifth one is like uh, these for the like uh, deleted markers or incomplete or multi parts uploads so this is basically uh, like when we uploading something and file get corrupts and these life second action these life cycle uh, actions are applicable according to that so let's pick uh, uh, we can pick multiple so we'll do move current and non current and so here we you can see that like in the drop down we don't have a, a standard i like if you look at this like we have all the storage classes except the standard i and the reason being is because the current version already is in standard i so you can't transition from sorry it's already in standard so you can't transition from standard to standard uh, like if we go back and check the waterfall model like if something is already in standard then it can go to other classes it's not like if standard is there it will uh, we, we can go in, like put it back in standard no that's not the situation here and that's the reason like you can see like whatever um, storage classes are after like other than standard are available here so you can look at the standard IA intelligent hearing one zone and all of them and uh, how to confirm the waterfall modeling let's say if we pick them just for understanding i just say for our understanding let's say we pick this put it like let's say 30 days and we want to add another transition so you can see that like only these are available like if it's there like it's it's downward it's not like we can from one zone, we can go up to intelligent zone or standard. So that's what waterfall model means. Okay, so well, let's remove this, remove this too. We'll start with standard IA, let's say after 30 days, add a transition. Then we move it to, I'll say, uh, glacier deep dive after 60 days. Okay. I acknowledge and you can see that like whenever we making a so for example here we said more, uh, like for the non-current version this is a transition then you can see whatever rules we or actions we apply like we will see what what will happen to the object so day day zero like objects become non-current because this is for the non-current one so when the object become non-current on that day zero uh, it starts from there and after that like on day th day 30 like it goes to like all non-current move to standard i and then after 60 it moved to glacier d and if let's say we do this too we add one more here standard 30 days add a transition let's say after that we do uh or we can let's say deep arrive after 60 days and this is for the current version so when we add this rule you will see similar kind of things on the like how the life cycle of uh, current version will will go and if you want to delete something let's add this and then here, here, here we can enter like it will be deleted after let's say 365 days so you then you can review it like once we we want to delete something like it will be reviewed like you, you like we need to check uh, if you want to delete something we need to check these two options one second if you go here like we need to if it's like if it, we we want to delete like current versions we have like this option need to be checked and if it is a non-current version then this option must be checked otherwise like you won't be able to delete or at least like you won't be able to perform that expiration um, action on them so after like you created this like just create click on create rule it will create the rule for you 
So this is pretty straightforward and uh, that's all for this video where basically we see how we create a, like a life cycle rule and two important things to keep in mind is like the actions we available one is the <coughs> sorry one is the transition and the other one is the deletion and we can see all five options here for current and non-current uh, in the life action life cycle rules actions uh, that's all for this video stay tuned for the upcoming video thanks um, for watching uh, it and uh, have a good one